Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I, I was lucky. I had, I had two wonderful parents. My mom and dad growing up were, you know, supportive of, of you know, taking me to 5.30 a.m. practice. Uh, I have an older brother who's uh, three years older and played goalie as well. And, uh, you know, you being a goalie, you know how, how much gear costs. And uh, so my parents getting stuck with, uh, with two kind of lost the lottery. But, uh, you know, like I say, I, I'm, I was, uh, was really lucky growing up. I, I always had, uh, you know, anything I could want, anything I could need. Uh, my parents were hugely supportive of, uh, you know, taking time off from work, uh, getting us equipment, paying for hotels when we had to go to weekend tournaments. Uh, you know, it's uh, hockey's an expensive sport when you're growing up, and 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 I, my parents never made me feel that burden. It was, you know, when I wanted to play on summer teams, when we had to travel to Canada or you know, wherever it may be, it was never, well, we can't do this, uh, you know, it's too expensive. It was always, yep, absolutely, like, let's go. And, um, you know, they're, they're just, uh, they were hugely supportive of, of, you know, hockey was kind of my thing growing up, and, and uh, I think they recognized that and, and did everything they could to support that. And, and for me, it's, uh, you know, it was great. It was uh I wouldn't be here today without, you know, the support that they had given me, and, um, yeah, so. How old were you, um, you know, where were you, if you remember that experience when you first heard that your mom, uh, when it became a little bit more than, than obviously just the hockey, when your mom, you know, had to deal with, you know, the first news of, of receiving, you know, breast cancer, and, and, and uh, you know, analyzing the, the fight ahead, and, and what was at stake, what, what were some of your first reactions? What were some of your family's first reactions? And again, how, how old were you and, and what were you doing at the time? Yeah, so I, uh, it was kind of a strange scenario for me. I was, uh, towards the end of my senior year, uh, we were kind of winding down our hockey season and, uh, and went on a little bit of a run. Uh, uh, my dad, usually when I got into college, I went to school about uh, nine or ten hours from where I grew up in Minnesota. And, and it, uh, I think, my parents would would come to games when they had an opportunity when they could get time off work and and they would always drive everywhere and uh i think it got to be something that they kind of would bond over you know they would have eight nine hours in the car by themselves and they kind of made a rule that they they weren't allowed to listen to the radio they had to talk to each other <laughs> and, um you know I, I think it was a really good thing for them and, and i think they you know they bonded on those trips and and really enjoyed and looked forward to those and um, uh, so towards the end of my senior year, I was kind of, uh, you know, I didn't know if hockey was something that I would, if I would play after my senior year of college or not, if I would have those opportunities. And, uh, so my dad, I think ended up making the last like six or seven weekends straight. Um, and he was coming by himself and, and I, I thought that was kind of strange, um, you know, they had told me that uh, it would, uh, that my mom just couldn't get the time off work, had been taking off a lot of time. And um, uh, so for, I didn't really think twice about it. You know, I, I thought it was a little bit strange, but I didn't think any more of it. And uh, we ended up extending our season a couple weekends longer than expected. And uh, my senior year had made it to, uh, to the final four of our league in Joe Lewis. And uh, my mom finally came and, and made that trip, and um, that ended up being the last week in a college hockey for me, and, and I was really thankful. Uh, you know, it, it was a pretty emotional weekend for all of us. Uh, you know, my parents and I, it was kind of, uh, like you said, the, you go to the 5.30 a.m. practices when you're eight, nine years old, and then, you know, now I'm fast forward 20, uh, 24, I think 23, 24 years old, I think 23 at the time. Uh, uh, you know, you've put in a lot of time and you've shared a lot of trips and, and not knowing if there's going to be any more. It was, it was an emotional weekend and, and I think, uh, you know, not knowing what was going on behind the scenes, uh, I think it was even a little bit more emotional for them that they were all there because 
uh, a couple weeks later, I, I found out that uh, basically about the diagnosis, the reason my mom hadn't been making the trips with my dad is that she wasn't feeling well. She was having some, some trips in and out of the hospital, and um, they didn't want to... Anytime you hear the word cancer, I think everyone kind of, your immediate reaction is panic. You know, it's, it's something that carries a lot of weight, and... Um, it's affected a lot of people, and, and uh, I think that was something they were kind of scared to tell me because they were afraid of how I would react to it. Um, and, and again, you know, when I did find out a couple weeks later, that was my reaction was, you know, as a kid, you feel like your parents are invincible, you know, like, like nothing, they can walk on water. And, and to find out that, you know, one of your parents is, is kind of going to be in, in a fight for their life uh, when you hear you know the word cancer it's uh, it scares you a lot um and so that was kind of how i found out i found out a little bit later and uh in my mom's case she's she's very strong and and can be very stubborn and uh doesn't really she's never been uh, enthusiastic about getting checkups and going to the hospital um my parents are both, uh, you know, they're, they're old school. They just, uh, you know, kind of grit your teeth and deal with it, rub some dirt on it and, and go with it. You know, that's, that's the way they are. And, and, uh, in my mom's case, she had had some other issues that kind of, she ended up getting hospitalized. And, and when she went there, the doctor said, Hey, listen, like you haven't done this test. You haven't had this test in a decade. And, uh, the doctor more or less forced her to, to, get some of these tests and uh and it really we lucked out because because of those tests and because of that uh you know the other issue that she had to deal with um they found uh they they basically found uh the lump and and found that she had uh, after some tests found that she had breast cancer and uh you know from my understanding i think early detection is is one of the biggest keys to to surviving and to beating cancer and so you know if you can ever say you're you're lucky when cancer's involved i think in my mom's case she was very lucky that with the timing that she got these tests done and uh you know they told her that it may have been a, a year to two before she would have even you know found it uh, with the manual tests or uh, um so yeah, I think you know it, it obviously was shocking, but uh, when we sat down and kind of uh, went over the whole scenario, and, and you know my dad was really dove into educating himself on on everything he could possibly do to you know to help my mom and be supportive, and uh, was great in passing along that information to my brother and I, and and I think we were we were all really thankful that she was able to doctors were able to catch it as early as they did and and it was kind of a you know one, almost the best possible case scenario that uh, you can have when cancer is involved so in previous conversations i mean you, you told me about the strength of your dad and the role that he plays in your family and keeping everybody together i know he's still a very much a hard-working man right now that, yeah. you know, that blue collar guy that loves to you know make a, a, a day's living and, and 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 i know based off of that it, it sounds like he was a strong guy and, and was able to relate everything but I mean for you Jeff I can only imagine and then I mean even with my personal experiences I mean just to to have a thousand and one things going on in your mind at the time as you said it was senior year what's the next step for you are you playing hockey not playing hockey you're looking for a normal job what are you what are you doing and then to have this on top of it I mean it had to be an, an emotional ride for you just however long the, the treatments had to go and however long you had to, to sit and think about what's going on with with you and, and your mom yeah, definitely. It's, uh, like you say, it's definitely tough. You know, anytime you, you hear the word cancer, it's very scary. And, and for me, there was a lot of uncertainty in my life at the time. Uh, you know, I didn't know where I was going to be the following year, if I was going to be playing hockey, uh, you know, a lot of that. Uh, I, I think in my case was somewhat good uh, because, it, you know, I, I was it served as a distraction you know it wasn't decisions that I could uh, could put off and say oh well, I'll figure that out later I'll figure that out later I need to worry about this it was things that I had to uh, it got me out of the situation a little bit and and I had to kind of work through some of those things and um, 
so from that standpoint, it was a good distraction. I think for me, one of the toughest things was being away from home. You know, it was, uh, um, you get updates over the phone, but you don't really know what's going on. And, and as I mentioned, my mom is, uh, she's a strong lady. She's, she can be very stubborn and, and, you know, I think she attacked cancer the same way, you know, it's, uh, she, I think it, at least, uh, her outward persona, I think it probably phased her less than any of us, you know, hers was just kind of, well, it's another thing. I'm, I'm going to beat it. You know, it was never, there was never any doubt in her mind. And I think that comforted us a lot. And, and when I would talk to her on the phone, uh, you know, being away, I would hear the strength in her voice and, uh, that she was doing well. And, and, um, you know, she never likes to, to have attention focused on her, you know, much like my dad is kind of the, like I said, the guy who he just wants everyone to be happy. And, and my mom's the same way, you know, she'll put, she puts everyone else before herself. And, and I think, you know, when my mom was going into surgery, I was tossing around whether or not I was going to go back for the surgery. And she's kind of saying, no, no, like, don't disrupt your life. I'm going to be fine. It's, it's nothing. Uh, you know, it's not a big issue. And, um, didn't want to disrupt anyone else for, for something that was going on with her. You know, it was always, she puts everyone else first and, and, um, you know, that's comforting. It was comforting for me to know how, you know, strong she is and, and, her ability to fight through that was great and and I ended up flying home for for the surgery and um it, it was tough you know like I said before when you're a kid you see your parents as these you know superheroes that that no, nothing can harm them and um you know to see her after surgery was was tough when you see you know anyone that you love is is hurting and and um you know in, in that environment just coming out of surgery it, it was really tough and it, it really hit home for me and and kind of made me uh, put things in perspective a little bit you know I had a lot of big decisions about if I was going to play hockey where I was going to play hockey what was going on and it really helped me to kind of put life in perspective and 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 kind of sort out you know what was important and what I really appreciated about life and and in life and um as I said earlier, you know, thankfully, um, they detected it really early and, and everything was successful. And, um, she's been, uh, coming up, uh, this, uh, this February, actually right around Valentine's day, she'll be, uh, cancer free for eight years. So that's fantastic. And I'm, that yeah. was going to be my next question is how is she doing? And, 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 and you touched upon it, just the, the perspective it gains. And then I would imagine just, you know, including the hockey career and as I mentioned we've had previous talks where you know you, you enjoy every game day more you enjoy every day of practice more just because you know it's it's something that you've been able to, to sit back and look back and have fun with and then on the other side of it I mean you have a you have a little one running around yourself and, and then you have the impact of, of your parents and, and your brother on you as well but now going into this pink in the rink game which is which is why I'm so happy you wanted to talk about it I mean it, it's it's a special game for the organization as, as the Stingrays. I mean, it's our ninth game. We've, you know, um, we're reaching almost two hundred thousand dollars to breast cancer research and support here in the in the area. But for you, it seems like this game is, is going to have that much more meaning. Do you feel like, and on a game like this, you, you know, do you think about your mom more often? Do you play harder for your mom? Because I know, you know, a lot of teams do these games, but mm -hmm. to, to have, I guess, to have this extra motivation is. Is, is unique not everybody has that perspective that you have do you feel like something a, a game like this and, and talking about this kind of adds more perspective to to the way you, you approach things yeah I think uh, I think perspective is a, is a great word to to describe it for me um, you know as I had mentioned earlier my I kind of found out and my mom had uh, started doing treatments and things like that uh, around uh, as I was wrapping up my college career and, and graduating from school and um, so as she was going through chemo treatments and that uh, I had ended up uh, playing in Columbia South Carolina and we uh, we had a, a pink in the rink game there and um, 
her final treatment was uh, was just before uh, that weekend. Uh, I think it was like the Monday or Tuesday before that weekend, and uh, they had ended up. My parents flew down um, for that weekend, kind of to celebrate, uh, you know, the final treatment, and, and she could, you know, kind of get away from the hospital a little bit and. and kind of take a deep breath after everything she had been going through and and it happened to be the pink in the rink weekend in Colombia and so uh, you know all those things kind of coming together for me with you know it being her final treatment and and having the pink in the rink game and and that was the first time they had watched me you know play a professional game and um a lot of things came together to kind of make that a special day and a special event for for me and i think for them as well and um you know it's now fast forward my, my eighth year and and i've had an opportunity to to be involved in and to play in in some different you know pink in the ring games and you know i think the biggest thing for me is is just the perspective it gives you you know, one thing that I, I try to do every game is, 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 you know, I wouldn't say there's any game that I play more or less hard. I, I try to do, do the best I can every night, every shot that I see. Uh, you know, you have good games and bad games. You have ups and downs over the course of the season, but the effort is always the same. And, uh, you know, so from a standpoint of trying a little bit harder, it's, it's not that uh, as much as it's, it's a time to for me to kind of reflect and put hockey in perspective and, and realize you know what's important in life and and the appreciation and uh as i mentioned earlier you know in my case the sacrifices that my parents have made to you know here i am <laughs> you know eight years into a into a hockey a pro hockey career and um just just kind of what the journey's been that's brought me to this point and and um you know with this being a special night uh, it just kind of hits home and, and really makes me appreciate how how fragile life can be and and how lucky i am to to be in the situation that i am you know my mom had a scare with breast cancer but has battled through it and, and is healthy right now and um you know how lucky i am to have have had them as parents you know everything they did to support me and support you know my career and everything else is uh it, it's really a special night to to kind of reflect on that and and you know take a deep breath and and look around and and really appreciate the journey that uh that has gotten me here and and that you know sharing it with them and and everything they've done to to support that is uh you know i couldn't be more thankful and my last question for you jeff before i let you go buddy is um in all the years that I've known you now, I've never known you to be an emotional guy. Be it, you never, I've never seen you mad. I've never seen you sad. I've never seen, you know, it, you're the yeah. guy that, that keeps everything at an even keel. But when it comes to something like this, when, when the, your, your personal world and the hockey world collide for an evening, do you yeah. see yourself or have you seen yourself uh, get a little emotional or, or overcome with, 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 with emotion in one, one direction or another? Yeah, definitely. I, you know, I think that that's one thing that's always a, I feel like the, the Rod Tidwell and Jerry Maguire, you're not going to get me to cry, Joey, <laughs> you know, but uh, no, I, I think it's definitely something, uh, you know, anyone, you, you have a special bond with, with your parents, you know, I mean, it's, uh, you mentioned earlier, you know, I have, uh, you know, my son Liam now and, and the feelings that I have towards him, it, it really puts perspective into, you know, thinking back through my life and the and the sacrifices that my parents made for me, and and it really makes you appreciate how much your parents love and care for you and will do anything for you. And, um, you know, I, I still to this day remember standing in the recovery room when she came out of surgery, and, and that was one of the few times in my life that I just I couldn't control it. You know, I, I started crying and and. Um, you know, yeah, it's any time that, you know, you, you kind of have a scare in, in your parents' lives or, or anyone that you love or care about in your life, it's, uh, you know, it's an emotional time. And, and I think to, you know, the feeling of gratitude for me that she, you know, they were able to detect it early, which I think is, is so important. And, um, 
you know, it, that is, is huge. You know, the, the sequence of events that came together to, to get her in early to get the tests and, and the treatment that we had, uh, you know, we have great, a great care system in my hometown. And, uh, you know, a lot of families are, are uprooted and have to go, you know, move hours away for treatments. And, uh, you know, we've done some work with, uh, at different places in town here of, you know, families who travel around the world. And, um, you know, a, a little kid that I've gotten to be good friends with Hayden, their family goes, drives to Maryland every other weekend for treatments. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things to be thankful for in my mom's case. And, and I think, you know, for our entire family, the fact that she's still here and, and uh, you know, can still share in this adventure. I'm just, I'm so grateful for, for the sequence of events that came together to allow that to happen. And, um, you know, having these games every year and, and taking some time to reflect on it, I think is, uh, is important. You know, it really puts life in perspective. So.